Hey guys, it's Jasma, and today we're going to make some hand-painted matcha macarons. Now, I've made hand-painted videos before for Valentine's Day, I painted a macaron for that, and also for sugar cookies during the holiday season. Make sure to go check those out, they're in the description down below, and also in the eye in the corner up above. They were all a lot of fun to make, so I thought I'd make some more. Uh, matcha is one of my favorite flavors. I think they taste great in macarons as well because it's slightly bitter, so it kind of balances out the sweetness, which is really great, and I also love the green color. Now macarons are a little bit complicated to make and it does take a little bit of practice so if you've never made them before make sure to check out my basic macarons. I will also link that in the description and the eye above where I go into lots of detail on how you make macarons and make sure that you succeed every single time. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell for more videos to come. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I post a lot of behind the scenes and also recipes that I'm testing. Let's get started. First off, we're gonna work on the dry ingredients. Now, whenever you're making macarons, it's always important that you get rid of the extra clumps inside of your almond meal so that you get a nice and smooth macaron shell. Now, I recently purchased a food processor, which is now my absolute new favorite thing. So I started adding an extra step inside of my macaron making process. This is totally optional, but I definitely think it makes a difference. So I put all of my dry ingredients into a food processor first, blend it up a little bit, and this not only helps mix it all up, but it also refines the almond meal a little more, so it makes passing everything through a sieve a little easier and makes it faster as well. Make sure that you don't overmix this, because if you blend the almond meal for too long, it will turn into an almond butter, and as good as a matcha nut butter sounds, that's not the recipe we're going for today. For the meringue, I'm using my stand mixer with my whisk attachment as always, but of course if you don't have this, a hand mixer works as well. I've already measured out my egg whites. This is 50 grams, one and a half eggs. It's really important that you use an electrical scale to measure this, especially when it comes to making macarons. Precision is really important to ensure that you come out with the right results. So I'm going to pour this into my stand mixer, then mix this until it becomes a little frothy before beginning to add in the granulated sugar. I'm going to sprinkle in half of the sugar. And then as it starts to become really white and you can no longer see any huge bubbles, we're going to add in the last bit of sugar. And just beat until stiff beats form. My meringue is now ready, so we can fold in the dry ingredients to form our macaron batter. Now this is the most important step in my opinion in terms of making macarons because it controls the consistency and the overall texture of your macarons. So I'm gonna start folding this in. I have my dry ingredients here. I'm just gonna pour it straight in. Start off by using your spatula and just go around the bowl like so. What I'm doing here is kind of gently combining the dry ingredients with the meringue before starting to actually fold it and deflate it. Once it starts to kind of come together to make a paste, I'm gonna take my spatula and just run it down the center every time I go around the bowl. There are many different ways for you to fold macaron batters. Um, other people do it differently, but this is just what works for me. At this point, I'm going to start to test out the consistency of my batter by letting it drip down my spatula. We're looking for it to form a ribbon. Like that. And as soon as it does, you want to stop folding. The batter is now ready. I loaded it into a piping bag fitted with a round tip. I'm going to pipe this onto a baking tray lined with some reusable parchment paper. You can also use a silicone mat if you would like. It provides a really nice and smooth surface. I just don't really like to use regular parchment paper for macarons because I find that it kind of wrinkles. So you want to pipe these on into circles. You can also use a template underneath to make sure that they're all the same size. I just like to eyeball it. It works out pretty well for me. I'm going to bang this on the counter a couple of times to just release any air bubbles. Then I go in with a toothpick to smooth out the surface before it dries and also to pop any air bubbles that haven't popped itself. It's important that we do this because we're going to be painting on these macarons later so you want a nice and smooth surface. 
Now I'm gonna leave these out for it to dry and form a layer of skin on top. Um, the time that it takes usually varies. It doesn't take a super long time with this recipe, but it will depend on the humidity of the room and the kitchen, wherever you are making these macarons. So just as soon as you can touch them without anything sticking to your fingers, they're ready to go. While the macarons are drying out, I'm gonna work on my matcha white chocolate ganache as the filling. Now you can use really any sort of filling, it's very versatile, you can use buttercream, jams, different other types of creams, but I find that chocolate ganache is my favorite type because it's super easy to play around with the flavors and it's also really easy to put together. So in a bowl here, I'm gonna first add it in my matcha powder. And to that, I'm gonna add in a little bit of cream to kind of start making this into a paste first so that it mixes a little bit better into the rest of the ganache without forming lumps. I'm gonna give that a mix. When there are no more dry bits of matcha, I'm gonna add in the rest of the cream and just mix everything together. Once the matcha is completely combined into the cream and there are no small bits of it, I'm gonna pour in my white chocolate chips. I like to give it a mix so that the chocolate is completely covered by the cream. Then into the microwave this goes for 50 seconds. Once microwaved, you want to let this sit on the counter for about a minute so that all of the chocolate can be completely melted and then we're going to give it a mix. Once the chocolate ganache is completely smooth, it will look really runny, but we're going to place this into the fridge for it to chill so that it can become nice and thick so that we can pipe it into our macarons later on. So I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and just leave it in the fridge until we are ready to use it. My macarons have baked in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for exactly 10 minutes. It's important that you don't let it over bake because not only will it get too crunchy and dried out, the top is also going to brown, which is going to make it look a little bit less appealing because we want to paint on top of it and you want a nice and even surface without too much browning on top. So I've let these cool completely because you don't want to remove it from the um, parchment paper until it's fully cooled or it might stick and break easily. Um, you know that it is completely cooked when you are able to peel it off and nothing sticks to the bottom. It should come off nice and smooth. So I'm just going to peel all of these off and I'm going to match it with another macaron around the same size. I like to do this because it just makes it a little bit easier to sandwich later on. The macarons are now ready so we can get on to the fun part which is painting the shells. I think this takes the macarons to a whole nother level. It makes it very unique and also very pretty and it's also a really fun thing to do. If you choose not to do this, of course, you can just skip the step and then fill the macarons up with the filling and you'll have perfectly good matcha macarons for you to enjoy. But since we all have a little extra time on our hands now, why not try something new if you've never done this before? In terms of equipment, it's quite simple for this. You're gonna need one shade of gel food coloring in the shade Juniper Green from the brand Wilton. You can use different brands as well, but this has worked out pretty well for me in the past, so I've stuck with it. Um, I'm gonna be playing with the value of this just using one shade, so you're not gonna need other colors. You're gonna want some clear almond extract or really any sort of food extract because there's a high level of alcohol in this, which means that it can dilute the gel food coloring but also evaporate really quickly when it's on the macarons, which is why we use this. Make sure you're not using water or any other sorts of liquid to paint these macarons. And to paint, I'm using a small watercolor brush that I only use for foods. I've painted different things like my sugar cookies and also other macarons as well. So I have a specific set of watercolor brushes only used for food. Make sure that yours is really clean. You don't want to have touched paint with your brush before um, and then use it on food. That would be very unsanitary. I'm gonna pour the almond extract into a small bowl and then cover it with a piece of plastic wrap so that it doesn't evaporate while I'm working on my macarons. It's important that you do this so you don't waste any of your almond extract or whatever sort of extract you're using. Cool, so I have also a plate that I use as a palette. You can just use any sort of clean surface as well. I like to use a white plate so I can see the colors. I'm using a toothpick to just put a little bit of my green onto my palette. And now the painting begins. This process is really self-explanatory. If you've ever done watercolor painting before, it's exactly like that. The almond extract is essentially the water here, which dilutes the food coloring, which is the paint. So the more you add, the lighter the shade will be, and the more food coloring that you use, the darker the shade would be. So just based off of that principle, you can play around with the shades and values however you'd like. 
I kept the design really simple here with just leaves. It still looks nice and I think the green contrasts really well against the matcha macaron shell. If you would like to go off and create masterpieces on these tiny edible canvases, then of course, go ahead, you do you. And if you don't claim to be an artist in life and you don't feel the most comfortable with this type of drawing, um, I'd recommend going on Pinterest and looking up some watercolor designs that is really great to reference off of as well. There really is much more explaining to do here, so just have fun with it. Once you are satisfied with all of your drawings, just set them aside for them to dry off while we whip up our ganache filling. The chocolate ganache has been chilling in the fridge for a couple hours now and I'm going to whip this up a little bit so I can incorporate a little air, make it fluffier and also a little bit thicker. If you don't plan on doing that, you might want to add a little bit more chocolate to this recipe because it is a little bit runny as is so it isn't meant for piping straight away. And just grab a whisk and start mixing this. I like to do it by hand because it's such a small amount, I think my muscles can handle it, but if you want, you can also use an electrical mixer. You can see it's already starting to thicken up. The color will start to become a little bit lighter, and soon it will be a pipeable consistency. You can see this is already a lot thicker than it was before. I loaded this into a piping bag, or this is a block bag, but you can also choose to use a butter knife to just spread it in between the macarons and sandwich it like that. It works perfectly fine, but I want a little bit of a cleaner look. So I have my ganache ready to go. You don't want to touch this too much because um, the heat of your hands will melt it, so whenever you don't need it, just set it down. Finally, after all of that hard work, we can sandwich our macarons together. So on one shell, you want to squeeze on however much ganache you desire and put on another shell. That's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed these hand-painted matcha macarons. They not only look great and also taste delicious as well. I recommend refrigerating this for a little bit before serving so that the filling can have a chance to stiffen up a little bit more and all the flavors can get to know each other in the fridge. I think it tastes best by then. If you would like to see more macaron videos, I've made plenty of them in the past for different seasons and also different occasions, so they will all be linked in the description below. Be sure to check those out. And if you would like to see more matcha desserts, I will also link them down below and in the eye in the corner above. I think matcha has such a great flavor. Not only does it add a slight bitterness, so it kind of balances out the sweetness, but the color is also really beautiful. So once again, I really hope that you could try these out. Stay tuned for more videos to come, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.